YouTube, it's Faye, and for today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a timing belt on a 3.4 liter 5VZ engine, the third generation Toyota 4Runner version. Here goes. Coolant is draining! Now that I have all my coolant drained out, my next step is going to be remove my radiator. Now, you don't have to remove your radiator to do the timing belt. I just find that it is, first of all, super easy to do and does not take that much time, does not add that much time to the job, and it gives me so much more space. And you'll see sort of later on in the video why I need a lot of space, <laughs> especially for little me. Um, now, I'm not going to include this as part of the tutorial because I want to keep this to just the timing belt portion. If you would like to see a tutorial about me removing and replacing the radiator, I will link that in the description below. I feel like if you are on the skill level where like, I'm going to tackle my own timing belt, then probably you don't need the tutorial for the radiator. So <laughs> I figured I'd skip that for this video. And then the next step I would say would actually be removing the fan before you remove the drive belt. And you do so with four 12 millimeter nuts. And that is not 100% necessary, but what I find is that the little bit of added resistance that the belts give make it easier to undo those nuts, like take the fan off. So definitely, definitely do that. Here we go, 12 millimeter. And sometimes you get lucky and these are loose enough that you can just, oh, well, that was only because I said something. Okay, finally ran into some trouble, so now it's time for my pry bar. Here we go. Four. Now I'm gonna remove my accessory belts and I'm just gonna start from the outside and work my way in. Once again, I'm gonna skip this part because I have another entire video dedicated to this, which I will link in the description below. So let's move forward. And the next step is gonna be removing our crank pulley or harmonic balancer. And featured here, you see my lovely homemade wooden crank pulley holder, which worked great to get the bolt off. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens when I go to put it back on. Now that the bolt is loose, you may need one of these puller tools in order to get your harmonic balancer or crank pulley off. I just got this at AutoZone. I think it was like $15. My kit actually did not come with the proper bolts that fit my harmonic balancer, so I had to go to my favorite tool store, uh, not really, but Home Depot, the closest one to my house, and get the right hardware to be able to attach my crank pulley holding tool. You wanna thread these in gently, but they do not need to be super, super, super tight. Just hold that tool in place and get enough threads going that you feel confident that there is a good grip and you're not just gonna rip out the first couple threads. And now I've got my 19 millimeter socket on my big ratcheting breaker bar. And actually about halfway through, I switched to my little 19 millimeter ratcheting wrench because it got a little bit easier and I was also running out of space here at the end. And then you see the harmonic balancer is almost all the way off and I'm able to pull it off by hand. Next, I've got my 10 millimeter short socket on my little zip zip tool. I am using my power tool to remove the upper timing cover bolts. I will not be using this tool to install my upper timing cover bolts because obviously this is plastic and you don't want to break it. You may have seen one of my other videos where I show just inspecting the timing belt and I talk about how to access those two hidden bolts. So now you can see I'm going to be detaching my spark plug wires. I've got my short extension to get to that last pesky bolt I cover this in greater detail. I will link that in the description below. Now the next step and last step in removing the upper timing cover is, as you can see my hand, it's right above my hand there, that electrical connector. Oh, there we go, last bolt, sweet. And that electrical connector is accessible from the front or the rear side of the timing cover. And in the other video, I showed removing it from the outside. This time, I don't know, I just decided to remove it from the inside. They're both equally easy, so it depends on whether or not you're struggling one way or the other to get this darn thing off. Whoops, I got a little bit ahead of myself here. It's a step I forgot to show you. Alrighty, so I got all my bolts undone. Now there's just a 10 millimeter bolt here that holds the dipstick in place. I guess that's what happens after you perform a job and record it a few times, they all start blending together. 
Now I have my 14 millimeter socket on a regular ratchet and I'm gonna be removing the span bracket. I'm just using the ratchet to loosen these bolts first because sometimes they can stick in there <laughs> and my little power tool just isn't gonna do it. Whoops, that one was supposed to come off as the nut and the whole stud came out, so I guess I'll get to that later. You can also see here on the left-hand side that that bolt is actually going through the tensioner for the power steering belt as well, so just make note of that. Now I've got my power tool and I'm doing the final removal of these bolts. Since the belt is off and those other mounting points are loose for the power steering tensioner bracket, I can just set that off to the side and now we can remove our fan bracket. Now that that bracket is out of the way, it exposes the water pump beneath it and now we can inspect it and see how badly it's leaking, just like my front crank seal. Awesome! <laughs> we'll be replacing this later. Uh, okay, and now moving to the lower timing cover. And my first time through filming this, I actually didn't get to show you since I was missing one of my screws. But for the lower timing cover, you've got one bolt here and then two bolts on the side and then one underneath. And this is the one that you can't get to unless you remove this starter wire bracket here. So let me get a little closer and show you. So here's the last bolt for the timing cover. And I'm gonna remove this 10 millimeter bolt right here. And then the other one is hiding. Whoops, okay, there it is. Little extension for the inner one. And these bolts are super short. <laughs> all right, now I can get to that last. And you, you don't have to pull it all the way out. I did last time because I wanted to clean around here because I had a, a leak that I fixed, obviously. Look how, look how clean and nice it still looks. Let's see that last bolt. You can see if you had someone who torqued them properly, 80 inch pounds. There's, you know, absolutely no real pressure on them at all. <laughs> And there's my last lower timing cover bolt. Pull this off. And good thing I cleaned it so I can see if I have any new leaks. And it's looking like, no, it looks really good. Now that I have my timing covers removed, I'm gonna set my engine to cylinder number one, top dead center. Now in order to make this a little bit easier and remove some resistance from the great compression that my engine has, I'm gonna remove my spark plugs Actually, I already did that. If you would like to see me do this, I have a whole video all about spark plug removal and replacement. I'll link that in the description below. So if you wanna watch me do that, you can. Otherwise, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So go right ahead and do that. And then reinstall your crank pulley bolt. Get yourself a 19 millimeter socket on ratcheting ratchet with some length to it. And go ahead and turn your engine over until your timing marks align. Now the timing marks on this engine are super, super, super straightforward. That little dot on the crankshaft sprocket, the tooth right above it, you wanna line up perfectly with the little arrow that's pointing down, that is cast into the rear cover. Then for the cam gears, you're gonna line up the little notch on the cam gear itself with the little notch that is on the backing plate. So super simple, super straightforward. So now that you have your engine set to cylinder number one at TDC, now you can remove your timing belt. And I know there's gonna be some trolls out there or some haters that are gonna be like, no, you can just take the belt off and put a new one back on. Yes, technically, technically you can, but like, why would you wanna risk it? Like, because, as you take the belt off, sometimes depending on like where your valves are at, your cam gears can actually like move super fast. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Um, or in this case, like for mine, I needed to replace my cam seals and my crank seals. So I knew that I had to take the gears off. And sometimes when you're trying to hold them in place, you can move them a little bit. And I just didn't want to take that risk. And neither should you. Even though before you remove your belt, you're gonna mark it with a paint pen like you saw me do earlier in this video. So Yes, you could also mark it, but let's just let's just put it to cylinder number one TDC and then you're safe. Okay, so now you're at cylinder number one TDC. So now what? You try to take your belt off and it doesn't come off because the tensioner has a lot of freaking tension on there. <laughs> so we're gonna have to remove the tensioner in order to remove the timing belt. So there's two different ways of doing this. And if you read the factory service manual, it'll tell you to remove the AC compressor, uh, uh, 
This is the Junkyard engine that I got from Pull Apart. Uh, obviously, it's not my engine because my truck still runs just fine. Uh, but this is my Junkyard engine from Pull Apart. Heck yeah. And here's just like a random... I just grabbed a random AC compressor that I, I had. Uh, you know, when you when you pull a core, you don't get to have all the accessories. You pay extra for them, and uh, my AC compressor is great. So I just pulled this engine and removed some accessories. But this is just one that I removed from a customer car. It's a Toyota one, but it's it's not for this engine. But anyway, you've got these four bolt holes that go through the AC compressor that mount it to the bracket. So you're gonna loosen these four 12 millimeter bolts and then you can just suspend the AC compressor out of the way. You don't have to evacuate the system. If you just have a piece of mechanics wire or well, a thicker gauge mechanics wire because this is actually kind of heavy. I mean, once again, this isn't the right one, but you get the idea. The AC compressor is gonna be pretty heavy. You can just suspend it out of the way. And the reason why I'm showing you on this engine is because I tried so hard to film it on mine and you know, I just, I'm just filming it with my phone. So uh, sometimes it's uh, <laughs> kind of hard to, to get the angle. So you're gonna undo these four bolts and they're not gonna be able to actually come out. They're gonna hit the frame rail. So uh, you just leave them in there, pull it away. And then you've got this bracket. There are four 14 millimeter bolts. And then there's another bolt right here in the front. And this one is gonna be really easy and obvious for you to get. These four are gonna be a little bit tricky, especially this rear one. This one I get from underneath, this lower one I get from underneath. And then once you get this off, it gives you the ability to access the tensioner. So let me show you real quick what I'm talking about. All right, I'm gonna start with this one in front because that's probably the one you're gonna start with too. And this is a long bolt. And I'm gonna set this one aside. And you'll get that from the front. Now these are gonna be quite a challenge. I actually don't get these with an impact and you know, if only, you know, this is only on the stand sort of thing. You're gonna struggle with getting a little ratcheting wrench in there, but that's really the best way to do it. Now the bottom two bolts are much shorter than the top two bolts, so make note of that. Uh, actually, I'll just compare them side by side so you can see the difference. All right, so these two bolts are gonna be on the top and those two, the two shorter bolts are gonna be on the bottom. Okay, and now it exposes my tensioner. So now it'll be super, super, super easy for me to get to this back bolt. You can see whoever did this one tried really hard and struggled and is so rounded off right now. Oh my gosh, that person tried and why aren't I wearing gloves, Faye? Oh my, I got one glove, but I got it on the wrong hand. I'm setting a bad example, hold on. I don't hate getting my hands dirty, I just don't wanna get cancer. Woo, okay. <laughs> So now you can access the back bolt. Literally you do all that work just to get to the back bolt because the front bolt is super easy to access by putting a wrench on there. Like it's, it's no problem, especially once you get your crank pulley off or your harmonic balancer off. The only thing is, since there's a bunch of tension here, you don't want to just take off the front one and then leave the back one because it's actually going to end up getting cocked and then you can screw up the threads in there. And if you screw up the threads in there, then you're going to have to helicoil it. I don't think you can actually buy this entire piece. I mean, it's, this is cast into the plate. So you just have to be, or the backing plate, this is all cast. It's all part of the same piece. So you can't screw this up. <laughs> this is like the only tricky part about the timing belt job. So anyway, the first time that I did a timing belt, I did it just like this. And yeah, then, um, uh, fellow employee, Good Samaritan, came over and was like, uh, Faye, do you realize there's like such an easier way to do that? Uh, what is that easier way? And that is that you can actually access the tensioner from underneath. And that's the way that I have done it ever since. Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to get it from underneath. I took some pretty crappy video when I was actually doing the job. So now coming underneath the truck, do you see that thing that says J11 on the bottom? And then the bolt right above it, that is our tensioner. And this is so hard to film. <laughs> this is impossible to film. And that's why I, I re-recorded it. This is actually my third time recording and adding footage for this video. Okay, so then there is a specific formula of socket and extension combination. So I'm gonna show that to you and then I'll just show how you can just in there and access it. So here's the magical combination. Actually, it does not matter what length extension you wanna use. So if it's higher up in the air and you wanna use a longer one or 
whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, these these two <laughs> are, are, are that, because you don't want to use a full wobbly socket because it just gives too much movement. So this is what this looks like. And I got this off the Snap-on truck for probably once again, way too much money, but whatever. Uh, and it just gives just enough wobble that you can and, and and it's not too it's not too wide i've seen people actually shave these down in order to get them in there but i can get this one in there just fine and then if you get your flashlight and you come from this side if i was doing this and i was on the ground i would be watching from this angle because as i'm getting this up in here you can get your hand on the top to gently guide it onto that inside bolt so that thing that says j11 that's the bottom of the tensioner and there you can see that bolt. Obviously, this is our starter wire. What you see right here is the frame, and I'm looking straight up. Oil pan, AC compressor. Okay, and here I am on the bolt. Just to show you that this combination does work. Okay, so here I have my ratchet, my extension, and then, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I've got my flashlight up here. <laughs> I can see my socket on there, so I can also watch it as I'm undoing it and make sure that everything works out all right. Now I'm at the point where I'm just turning that inner bolt by hand. So I'm going to do, I'm going to loosen a little bit on the inside, loosen on the outside, loosen on the inside, loosen on the outside, and just release tension on the belt slowly. my tensioner and now the time has finally come we can remove our timing belt you can see that the tension is still being held on these three sides but whoop not right there where the tensioner is so that's where I'm gonna slide the belt off from just giving myself a little bit of space I'm gonna pull it over the smooth pulley here also pulling it over the water pump to help me get it off of that crank pulley. You can't really pull it off the cam pulleys because of that massive lip, so that's the way you're gonna wanna do it. Also, if this is only your first time or you've only done a couple of timing belts in your life, make sure that you really feel that tension before you remove the belt so you know what it should feel like when you're going back on, because once you take it off, there's no going back, man. There's no going back. All right, oh, get off there. <laughs> get off. All right, hopefully you like this video and stay tuned for part two of this video where I replace all of the accessories and put the timing belt back on. All right, see you next time, y'all. Bye. Check this out, the <laughs> chicken. It's raining outside and her face, like you can actually, <laughs> you can actually see her face. That blue thing is her ear. Can you see her ear? There you go. <laughs> you can actually see your face because your hair is all wet. You have eyes. Yeah, see, she does actually have eyes. Isn't that the cutest thing you've ever seen? Oh, I love you. Anyway, thought you'd get a kick out of that. <laughs>